East Lansing's Ryan Miller. Four years older than Drew, making a fourth consecutive start and has back-to-back -back shutouts the previous two games. Jimmy Howard returns to the Red Wings. He won both games over Vancouver last season, allowing just one goal on 36 shots in the two games combined. He also stopped David Booth on a penalty shot here. Daniel Sedin was the only one to score a goal in the season series last year against the Red Wings for Vancouver. Out with brother Henrik, 199 career goals for him. He scored his first in 10 games Friday. Daniel's more the goal scorer than Henrik. And Radom Bravada has been a nice addition on the other side. The Red Wings have back Pavel Datsuk in the middle. Henrik Zetterberg and Justin Abdelkader as the Euro Twins for the Red Wings reunited against the Twins for the Vancouver Canucks, Henrik and Daniel, as the play is offside, just inside the Red Wing blue line. And Mick, here's a look at the Red Wing lineup this afternoon. Yeah, the biggest switch, of course, with those two going back together up at the top of your screen there will be the movement of the three Cs with Darren Helm coming down here to go with Weiss. They were together with Datsuk and Franz, and now over on this side, and Nyquist to play with Tatar and Shea. And usually it's been Yurko over there, and he's rolling down to the fourth line so-called anyway but Mike Babcock pretty much rolling all four lines pretty equally with time and that's what the Vancouver Canucks and Willie Desjardins have enjoyed so much this year on a team that uh, didn't get any respect really coming into the start of the season but he's a nervous looking son of a gun behind the bench very twitchy but boy they like what he's done so far well I think the players would prefer him to be twitchy than the players being twitchy when they had John Tortorella <laughs> because I think that's been the complete reverse it's been a breath of fresh air there with Willie Desjardins oh coming in and the lights have gone oh out boy. Here well don't be too hard on your twin brother come on on, on John Tortorella, Tortorella. Come on. <laughs> it's, it's gone a little dark here I wow. think it's the weather outside, a beautiful, well, cloudy, but still a very warm Sunday afternoon. The weather outside is a little frightening. Yeah, but in a good way. It's, it's great. Doesn't seem like wintertime. Uh. 29 seconds into the game, we've got a, uh, a malfunction of the lights here at the Joe. We certainly do. I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, bit by bit. It was like a boom, but it was gone. Wow, it's a nice, actually, look down there, and I don't know why they don't play like that. They probably said the goalies can't see too well, but that's okay by me. It's actually a pretty, pretty sight looking down at Joe Louis Arena and looking on the ice there with the center ice. Actually, the Red Wing end is a lot lighter than, uh, than Ryan Miller's end. That's Tom Cowell, one of the uh, referees, along with Tim Peel. There's a look at Ryan Miller, who in town, every the whole family got together last night, along with Drew. They all went out for dinner. Uh, Ryan uh, and Drew, uh, more for the two of them. They have 30 family and friends here taking in the game tonight. They're getting instructions. Kenny uh, Cowell is down at the end from uh, Sheldon Newman, who basically runs the building here, and Al Sabatka as well there. There's Sheldon. And they're trying to figure out who stepped on a line and what happened. What are we going to do? And uh, let the Olympic coach figure it out. <laughs> um, we might have a delayed start here. Two coaches are conferring with Cowell to figure out, all right, what do you want to do? Depending on what has happened and how long it's going to take to fix it. Could end up going back to the dressing room, you don't know. It's going to, that's what's happening. They're going back to the dressing room. So that something major had to happen for this to be called this quickly. There isn't any question about that. That we obviously can't fix it with a piece of duct tape or a flick of a switch. So we will get an official announcement here. Tom Cowell's on the phone now to Toronto. The uh, situation Ooh. room because uh, Toronto, we've got a situation here in Detroit. I guess. Well, that's not good. 29 seconds into the hockey game. And we have a <laughs> Ryan Miller with a smile on his face like, you got to be kidding me. How many people they got here, Kennedy Day? The gang, eh? Oh, the, the, the Miller gang? Uh, up where I saw Dean coming in, uh, Ryan and Drew's father coming into the game. And uh, they've got at least 30 here. And, and Drew had them all over. Uh, Drew at everybody and Colleen for Thanksgiving and then when Ryan came into town they were here a day early and they all went out for dinner last night so the whole family got together so a nice time and 
plenty. And Bo Horvat replaces Vancouver from London, so he's got his dad here and brother and plenty of families and friends. So now the question would be, I would, I would imagine that Drew and Ryan flip the coin for the bill, eh? You know, I didn't I'm ask thinking. that question. <laughs> yeah. Maybe Dean's just so proud of his kids. <laughs> They probably, they probably got a few dollars more than he does. I don't know what he does for a living, but nonetheless, hard to make the money these NHL guys make, that's for sure. It was funny because, you know, when Drew got the the, uh, the tying goal in New Jersey the other night, he was born in Dover, and I spoke to Drew after the game. I said, where's Dover? He said, I don't have a clue. No idea. So I was here for about two months. His dad's software business, and, and he got moved down to New Jersey. He said, we weren't there very long before we moved, and we were out in California. So I don't yeah. remember Dover at all, but uh, neat that, that Drew, from where he was born, got the tying goal. A big comeback win for the Red Wings, who were down 4-1 to in New Jersey, won 5-4, their first shootout win. And meet Vancouver for the first of two meetings this season. They'll meet again in Vancouver uh, to kick off January 15th, January 3rd. Uh, the Red Wings and Canucks will meet for the uh, second time this season. They only meet twice a year now under the uh, new conference setup. And the Red Wings swept both meetings last year. They won 2-0 here. Jimmy Howard the shutout and won 2-1 in Vancouver. So we've got a delay here and uh, shovelers are out just to make sure that uh, the ice will be ready when the lights are ready. Lights camera action at some point. They've uh, lit up the lights in the studio and we'll send you back there now. We had dropped the puck and we only played 29 seconds when uh, this happened. Quite a lovely sight looking down on the ice if you're not into goalies looking for pucks. But uh, let's hope that we're good to go the rest of the day here now. The only game in the NHL on this day. So we just thought we'd extend it a little longer. That's okay. I guess so. Eh? Well, you got Canadian Grey Cup going on today too. Up in not even sure where the game is. Hamilton and Calgary. I think they're in the in the Grey Cup up in Canada. That's their. Well, I know everybody's picking Hamilton. Are they? Harold Ballard to DC, and everybody everybody's picking Hamilton. They probably be the prohibitive it. favorite. <laughs> There's one of the Millers. There's many of them here today. He had a big smile on his face. He's been really, really hot lately. Two of his last three games. Goose eggs. He's been really good. As a matter of fact, Kenny, their coach, as you look at some statistics of the top goalies in the NHL, has said, our team hasn't been that good. Our goaltending's been great. Well, Ryan Miller's got a shutout streak going of 152 minutes. And... Uh well, 29, there you go, and 34 seconds now for him. He blew the start of this game. He's allowed just one goal in the last 76 shots he's faced. But in his career against Detroit, he's just 2-9-2. Two, and, two. and Drew Miller, against his brother, has a record of 6-1. and one. He's 5-0 and oh with the Red Wings against Ryan, wherever Ryan has been in, in Buffalo. And his first start against him in Vancouver. Drew's never scored a goal uh, against his brother. So uh, maybe today will be the first time, but he certainly has the uh, winning record against him at 6-1 and one and 5-0 and oh as a Red Wing. And just like that uh, morning skate pick, you know, that you do and I do, uh, they'll go pick up the pucks themselves here. Yeah. A little happen. bit of help. <laughs> well, at least he brought the bucket. Yeah, he brought the but, bucket. But that number 20 was really happy to score his first goal the other night in New Jersey. As we all know, he could have had it a long time ago and on several occasions. He had the one call back. And that wide open net on a terrible, terrible call. It shouldn't have been a penalty. And he's had several other really good scoring chances. So he's been a bit sick. Bet he was really happy as you saw his reaction after that goal against the Devils the other night. And what a comeback that was for two points in the shootout. So they'll pick up right from where we left off. They'll have the uh, face off. Well, the Red Wings uh, have a different unit out. Now Datsuk is out there against the Sedin just Whoa. at the start of the game. Whoa, and Jimmy Howard had to be quick there as Daniel came close. Henrik a shot block. Canuck swarming as Verbata another try. Boy, Vancouver came very close. And as they dropped the puck again, as Edler threw it back in, he's on defense with Chris Tanev for the Canucks as the Red Wings, Sederberg, Datsuk, and Applicator get it down ice. I wonder that thing didn't get to the back of the net. Boy, that was crazy off right off the faceoff. Chris Tanner carries ahead the undrafted free agent. 
As the Canucks got a cross center and shoot it in. The Kaiser got held up in back of the goal, taken there by Alexander Burroughs. A center in front. Howard, a good stop there on Higgins. Another try for Burroughs, but taken away by Nyquist. Nyquist up there along with Tatar and Riley Shan. The forward line for the Red Wings. And Shan and Tatar are still together, but Nyquist joins them as he comes off the top line with some juggling here this afternoon with Datsuk and Zetterberg back together. Andy to Kaiser. Threw one in behind for his defense partner, Kyle Quincy. Brendan Smith and Jakob Kindle will make up the third pair on defense for the Red Wings here. It's the only lineup changed for the Red Wings, besides in goal, from their win in New Jersey. Xavier Roulette back to Grand Rapids to make room for Brendan Smith. His return after missing five with the infected hand. Ryan Miller cleared one around. Moving up on it is Stephen Weiss and his new line mate, Johan Franzen. Darren Helm stays with him. Helm has it. In the corner, the Canucks missing a stick. Helm turning in back of the goal. Weiss fighting for position in front. Weiss has it. Side of the goal. Miller now has that puck, and Ryan will hold on. As Yannick Weber picks up his stick. Well, when you have a delay like this, and they really didn't get a lot of time to warm up, this is when you can catch people, and the Canucks almost got the Red Wings. A couple of fortunate bounces for sure, but boy, with the Sedins on the ice and the way they can find the back of the net, they didn't get it up there, and then a good defensive play prevented a second scoring chance. Red Wings dodge a bullet right out of the gate. Yannick Hansen, who's had a terrific start to the season, first star of the week in the National Hockey League last week with five goals. Number 36 for Vancouver, who's got it behind the net. Threw one back out front, and that shot off Derek Dorsett's stick was stopped. Dorsett's been a nice addition for Vancouver as well. Drew Miller moved up on it. Out there along with Glenn Denning and Thomas Yurko, who's been hot for Detroit. Yurko stepped in front of Derek Dorsett. Kindle has to retreat. Kindle back there with Cronwall. Giving it back to Kindle. And Cronwall is set up. Kindle will go off in a change. Jonathan Erickson comes over the boards for him. So the work Brendan Smith into the lineup as time goes along here. Pavel Datsu coming in. Ryan Miller a kick stop there. Zetterberg hurried on that puck. Zetterberg. Back to the line. Erickson quickly across. Conwell, plenty of room. Wrist shot scores. Wow. There goes the shutout. Streak for Mr. Miller. Ay, ay, ay. And this is interesting. Cronwall has scored a bunch of goals this year. None of them like this. They've all been on slap shots. And the one they thought he had the other night was given to Shea in front of the net. This was a planned wrist shot. What a beauty that was. And Abdicator might be lucky. He didn't call for goalie interference, but it went to the right side of Miller, not the left. 155 minutes and 20 seconds. Uh, Nick, the shutout streak is over for Ryan Miller. Is Nick Cronwall who had a shot that he thought he scored for a bit, tipped by Riley Shane in New Jersey. But Cronwall gets that goal. So the Red Wings in a 1-0 lead on Cronwall's fourth of the season and his 16th point. And Henrik Zetterberg gets another helper. Nice move in there by Tatar, and then the play is called. So we get a stop in play, and... Uh, Mickey Redman, uh, you're no longer uh, 28. Sorry about that. Our flag star bank, Starwatch, says you've dropped the 29th Red Wings all-time leading scores. Really? Nick Cronwall just passed you with that goal. Oh, my But you're still oh top 30. I can't believe it. <laughs> you didn't play long enough. You're they're back to the Yeah, that's right. You know, sure, he's a defenseman, but, uh, you know, the game's played and all. No! Yeah. Again, you guys had that there a couple weeks ago. I, you never know when you're away from the game as long as I have been. You don't remember all that stuff. Going to be a hooking call here to the Canucks. I think they'll go to the power play. But yeah, but that's, you know what? You're right about defensemen or not. Vancouver number 27, two minutes for hooking. That's still on the offensive side of the game. Around 600 games for Cronwall. 
And they have over 300 points. That's pretty impressive stuff. And there's the hook. See, right there. Former Red Wing. Uh, 47th overall draft pick in 2006. Sean Mathias, who was sent to Florida in the Todd Bertuzzi deal. And then came to Vancouver in the Roberto Luongo deal. Who was at one time dealt with Bertuzzi. So, goes around, comes around. The Red Wings on a bell tire power play. Henrik Zetterberg's got it. He assisted on the Cronwall goal at two assists at New Jersey on Friday. So a power play that has been red hot. Nyquist threw one back too far away from Zetterberg. Power play that began this month in November at 9%. Gone to 21.5% from 9. So it has been dynamite. Had a couple of goals Friday in New Jersey. Back here for Cronwall. Passed off down low. Zetterberg got it off the kick plate. Nyquist tries to dig it free. Tanneth left there for Alex Hedler. A lift to the stick and back to the line and a good holding at the line by Cronwall. Getting the return pass. Went off a skate in front. Nyquist tries to find it. And this time it comes all the way back. And the first bell tire power play of this game for the Red Wings. Five for 13. They're past three games with a man advantage. Seven times this season, they've scored two power play goals in a game. Here's Datsu. That was blocked by Kevin Bx on the Bowling Green star. Puck is knocked away, and Kindle will have to go back and get it. Last half minute of this man advantage. Will Kindle leave it? Yes, he does. Datsu brings it in. He's got Tatar out there with him. Back at the line, and Weiss and Shayan. Here's Weiss. Going back to Tatar. Back for Stephen Weiss. Shayan in front. Weiss thought about going Datsuk's way, but didn't. Kindle fires. Saved by Miller. Datsuk rebound. Back in front. Miller will scoop that one. Backhanded wow. and hold on. Red jersey's just flooding the zone, and Miller made a nice move to keep this baby out of the back of the net. Detroit with lots of hustle now here in the early goal now that we've resumed just six minutes in. Hansen brings you the report card on the Red Wing power play you're talking about, Ken. And uh, the goal scoring, 3.5 per game. And I, I, I think the most important thing about this power play now is that they got 20 goals in 23 games. As you pointed out, they were just stone cold for a while. But almost a goal a game, that's where you'd like to be. Boy, it's a big advantage if you can do that. Vancouver Canucks scored over three goals per game, fourth best in the National Hockey League. So the bonded offense on the other side. And the Red Wings offense getting hot. And it's been a well-rounded offense too, including this guy Yurko. Off Glendening skate, tried to kick one back for Drew Miller. The Canucks will shoot it in. Alexander Burroughs goes after it. Already with six goals in the season for Vancouver. He had five all of last year in a horrible campaign. Injured part of it. Number 14 in white. Right there with Higgins and Nick Benino. They have been really good. They have been up. Stolen puck. High slot. Hit a body. Shane had an opportunity. Nyquist got dumped. To the line. Good keep in there by Jonathan Erickson. Feathered back in by Tatar to Nyquist. Nyquist back for Tatar. Just failed to click on that. you got to like this line for Detroit. So many options. Oh, uh, I mean, Nyquist goes basically, I, I, wanna, I don't even want to say down, but in a sense, but I don't think it's down, it's across. Three young guys with high potential offensively, they can skate. Nyquist doing just that here. He got past Bieksa. High slot and fanned on by Datsuk. You won't see that off. Nyquist again. For Applicator. Redmonds with good rhythm here this afternoon. That's it. Off Kindle. Deflects through Zetterberg. Back in front side of the goal. Zetterberg again. Came back to the line. Cronwall. Got it over. Kindle. That's it. Move quickly. Tic tac toe. And Applicator just off the heel of his stick. They got her going. Applicator with seven goals in the season. He had ten each of the past two seasons. Should blow by that. The top line duty. The exit trying to skate away from him. Flipped it off the boards back into the Red Wing zone. The sellout crowd here at Joe Louis Arena on this Sunday afternoon appreciates the effort. 
the Red Wings have put in, albeit 34 minutes later than they had planned to start. At center for Helm, with a right wing feed for Bronson. Bronson goes after it near side. Back across for DeKaiser. Steven Weiss behind the net. And a beautiful setup Weiss made on Xavier Willette's first National Hockey League goal that made it a 4-2 game. Started the comeback in New Jersey Friday. Weiss with some great work just like that behind the net. And then Helm carried on to Willette. Bronson with a shot goes off a stick and out of play. You know, when and you Roulette this, has since carried on to Grand Rapids. You start this kind of stuff, shifts like that, it gets infectious. And boy, the Red Wings line after line after 10 minutes. Fired it at Vancouver all over them here in the first. Well, Drew Miller has no goals on Brother Ryan, but uh, he did assist on Darren Helm's goal a few seasons ago right there. And that got Ryan pulled. So a little satisfaction for Drew. No goal yet, but an assist that made his brother's night end early. There's Dean and Teresa. <laughs> Drew and Ryan's parents. She's always wearing the colors of both teams. That's not the first time she's done that. That's pretty good stuff. Remember, she had used to wear the split sweater. She had the right. Sabre sweater right. and the, uh, right. the Red Wings the sweater. Half and half, yeah. yeah. She looks more nervous than Dean does, I think. <laughs> but again, it's the family be... all got together last night so nice, and they're going to be grandparents uh, coming up in March. Uh, Noreen, uh, Ryan's wife, uh, is expecting their first child. It really can't be a whole lot of fun for you. Really. No. I mean, proud, you can't win. Proud. No, I'm not yeah. talking about the baby. I'm talking about... No, no, I'm talking about the game. I'm proud, but it's, it's nerve wracking. You know, with the two kids, they got who's going to. The best of all could be probably if uh, if Drew got two goals and the game ends up tied, and uh, it doesn't matter who wins, then both teams get a point, and Miller plays really well and gets 50 shots on him or something like that. I guess we could go home happy for him. It doesn't always script out that way. So, Drew, but they got to be very proud. They got two boys and a great family tradition to be in the NHL at a high level. Right? Stuff. Maybe nothing to the nervousness of the Sutters. Here's a long Ooh. break in. Matthias coming in, and Howard made the save. Loose in front of the net. And there to take it away was Yurko. Tatar turns in the Red Wing in. Just past the halfway point of the opening period. It'll be a lot later than we thought it would be. A 34-minute delay due to a power outage here, partial power outage, in case you're just joining us. Red Wings with the first goal from Nick Cronwall, from Erickson and Zetterberg. Tatar's got it. Then had it intercepted on the feed down low. Back in, and a shot got blocked from Benino. Another try. And the puck deflects up and out of play. And with that, we'll step out. Red Wings continue to lead. 1-0 on a Sunday afternoon. Played by Kendall Back and Jimmy Howard. to say. AT&T U-verse, reverse, rewind. There's, you might guess, the goaltender Ryan on the right. And as they grow up, he's always been much taller, but not so today. There's Kevin, the cousin in that one. There's a whole gang of them all together. And uh, there's a good-looking picture right there. Ryan and Kevin on the left. Up into the corner. As held in by Bieksa. The Kaiser moved it ahead for Nyquist. Bieksa sets up back of the goal. The 33 year old. What a competitor he is. Burroughs takes it for the Canucks. Howard will stop that from Benino. He came over. The deal for Mannheim is going to be a penalty coming here. Really? To Vancouver again. Let's see if we can pick it up. High sticking is going to be the call to Burroughs. Oh, he chopped Jimmy Howard right in the, right in the neck. Good thing he had that bottom piece of the mask on. Watch the stick right there. It happened fast, but the referee caught it. Then he wasn't pushed into him either. So Alexander Burroughs, who's a big part of that second line, 
but Benito and Higgins, they've been really good. Burrow's off to a great start. In four straight 20 goal years. Ken Vincent had a real off year last year. But a great start this year. That line's been a, a bonus for them. Red Wings on a second belt tire power play here. Setterberg across the shot to score! What a Just play. that easy, what a pass! What a pass is right. Pike was wide open. Oh, boy. That was something else. What a bang bang play, and it took only 10 seconds to do it. And again, it's the importance of faceoff. Franson, Zetterberg, Nyquist, back of the net. Oh my goodness. Look at that yawning baby. Oh my. And Miller almost got it. But that is tic tac toe with the best of them. And Nyquist gets power play goal number seven. And that ties wow. for the National Hockey League lead. Seven of his 11 have come on the power play. We won't get many easier than that. More importantly, 2-0 Red Wings. And Henrik Zetterberg continues to rack up the points too of late. Well, who was that night when he scored that empty net goal? Yep. And you said, well, maybe that'll get him going even though it, it meant nothing in the outcome of the game. But that's the time, even an empty netter can get a guy fired up. You know what? Time to go. Now Zetterberg just uh, last game and into the first period tonight with four points and giving him six now the past four games. But you the Red Wing captain. You can see here, it's almost played 12 minutes. Red Wings are hitting on all cylinders here. Canucks are for it and yet to find their game. Mind you, they've been short-handed a couple times. But Detroit has really got some jump. And they're all into the game. And really, Vancouver's best attempt came just, you know, first minute of the game after the 34-minute delay. When they came back out and had a nice uh, few attempts at the Red Wing net. And since then, Detroit took them a couple of minutes, but then they found their skating legs. And they're up 2-0 here. Erickson had it blocked, then a slash and a penalty coming. Took the stick right out of Radim Verbata's hands. <laughs> The Red Wings had two of those called uh, in New Jersey, and this one a no-doubter. You, you know, I'm wondering when the embellishment penalty is going to be called on somebody dropping their stick in Third this fashion. Two I mean, a lot of times it's deserve it. This one, yeah. yeah I'd say... Oh, he chopped it now. Oh, broke it, yeah. So it's yeah. deserve on that one, but sure. so many of these guys are just, just dropping the stick. It happened to the same guy the other night, as a matter of fact. In New Jersey. Well, there's Nick Benino who came from Anaheim with Lucas Spiza and a couple of picks for Ryan Kessler in a third round. He had three assists Friday at Columbus. He's got 19 points third on Vancouver as that puck is set out of play. Oh, it was deflected off Vancouver, so the faceoff will come outside the zone. Good news for the Red Wings. Today's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting to the U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 175 countries and aboard ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. And welcome to you all and for all that you do. Kevin Bieksa leads Vancouver's power play, their first of this game. Red Wings one for two on theirs. Back to the point to Yannick Weber is a good shot from back there, blocked in front. Miller will go off, Fundening stays out. Abdelkader comes on for Drew Miller. Abdelkader had both goals here last February in a 2-0 win over Vancouver. out with Applicator in the shorthanded situation for Detroit. Vancouver's power play 19th in the league. And he struggled some on the road. Five power play road goals, but Vancouver has been very successful on the road. A 9-3 record. The nine wins on the road ties Calgary for best. The power play just two for their last 24. And Miller will send it back out to center ice. With Erickson in the box. <laughs> Brendan Smith takes up his spot with Cronwall. Killing a penalty. Did a nice job making a read there to make it easy to clear. Alex Edler will shoot it in. Lyndon Bay 
top 10 in rookie scoring. Number seven for the Cox out there with the Sedins. Bays in the slot. Daniel threw one over, but went off the stick of Quince. Canucks settle it back down. Looked around here to Henrik. Tried to go back to brother Daniel. Five seconds left in the Erickson penalty. Miller closes in there on Verbata. To the line, Edlin. Out of the box is Erickson. Canucks hold for one in the power play. Daniel Sedin got pushed in there. Erickson able to work over Henrik. Good save, Howard, there. Back to the point. The shot went wide. Moving in is Tana. And Spies on the other side. We've got doubles. Looks like doubles, yeah. And they're not done yet. Dorset. Oh, look, out, look out, somebody grabbed him from behind. That's dangerous. Dorset and Quincy. He likes to go, Dorset. Remember when he was with Columbus? Oh, yeah. Feisty son of a gun. And Erickson is telling him that, too. You want to go? I'll be right here for you, bud. And uh, Erickson is going to get off the hook, but not Quincy with him. You're watching Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. This game break is brought to you by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers, and the Red Wings' hot streak has seen them rocket up the Atlantic Division standings just three points behind the Lightning and Canadiens and could pull to within one with a win over the Canucks tonight. Kenny, back to you, Mitch. Thank you, Trevor. Good save by Howard. Right off the draw. Offsetting minor penalties. Three Red Wings break up. Datsuk, Smith to the goal. Datsuk, Smith in. Oh, and he just mishandled. Came right back in time. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Datsuk blocked it on the way back. Look at him come back. Kicked out his leg and blocked the pass. No wonder he gets the selfie award. Boy, oh, boy. Three times, in fact. And Brendan Smith's unhappy with himself, but he couldn't finish that baby off. He's still unhappy. Look out here. But a good move at center. Franzen lines up. Saved by Ryan Miller. Detroit just, they look, they look like they've got more energy and they're quicker here, Ken, than Vancouver. And they may be lucky to connect, but they're only down two to nothing. And all Howard's had to make two or three really good saves against the Sedins. Howard will grab that. And Brendan's probably thinking, Mick, you know, I missed the five games with a bad hand. My hands aren't in game shape for sure, playing your first and six tries. Yeah, he knows how to finish. I mean, Dexter finds a way to get him the puck in not the best of situations either. It was a little feather. Look at that thing. Boy, that's wonderful to look at. And if it hadn't have been in his feet, he just fanned on it. He knew he had to get it up into this area right here, but he couldn't get the blade on it. He fanned on it, but Pavel... Able to put that feathery pass right over two defenders. Boy, oh boy, he's a winger's dream. Smith took out his frustration on Benino. Trying to come back on him. Smith going up there. Will he force the face off? Well, he will. You know what he almost did, too? He almost played Gus Nyquist. And, and he could score from impossible angles as he came back from the front of the net. Put it in behind... Uh, Ryan Miller, and here's that back check by Datsuk. I mean, he just puts it into another gear, gets back in there, makes it look bloody simple, doesn't he? Yeah. He's an amazing hockey player. Franz, these guys are feeling it today. Holy smoke. They are taken off from the third period in New Jersey the other night. Thomas Tatar, in one of the goals in the 2 1 win in Vancouver. Daniel Alfredson. Who will retire December 4th in Ottawa had the other one. As the teams play four aside. Howard the save. Around the rebounded Erickson for Cronwall. Henrik Sedin is up now. He will peel off in a change with Brother Daniel. Cronwall, who opened the scoring, moves it. Guitar couldn't get through. It was knocked away by Ryan Stanton. Back in come the Canucks. Nevada dropped it back, goes to the front of the goal, never got there, and the three Red Wings are up as Kindle will join the rush. With Shane and Tatar on the left wing, who has it? Tatar left it there. Here's to Kaiser. Back across, and that was knocked down. Team's back at five aside now. Shane flipped it in for Helm. Helm on the near side made a move to try to escape. First on it is Stanton, pestered by Helm. Weiss 
Tried to keep control of it. Rada Bravada got it out to center. Dorset up there along with Kindle. Dorset gave Kindle a push to the end board. Kindle able to move it to the Kaiser. And a back pass in front for Weiss. Brought on here by Helm. Following up is Brendan Smith. For Stephen Weiss, went high slot for Quincy, but it was knocked down before it got there. A looper and a lead pass. Higgins in a race for it. Quincy stayed with him, and Higgins' stick broke in the process. A good hustle by the Red Wing blue liner to get back on Chris Higgins. On the first round pick of the Montreal Canadiens back in 02. At center for Hanson, who's puck friendly Smith. Saw the hit coming from Hanson. And Glenn Denning got a piece of his man. Tana, Miller on the intercept. Alex Epler, fanned on the shoot around. Tana got checked. Yurko follows up and has it. Put it back to the line to Cronwall. Had to settle the rolling puck back for Yurko. They worked so beautifully in New Jersey. And what was the uh, Miller tying goal from here going Carl Hall on a pretty given goal? Nice talk. Good Miller talk. gives it back for Nick Cronwall. Cronwall scoring 3.15 into the game from Erickson and Zetterberg. And Nyquist on a power play from Zetterberg and Franzen in 11 16. Applicator couldn't get it through to Pavel Datsuk. Less than a minute to go in the first period. Oh boy. Giveaway there. We're about oh. a goal post. Woo. Under the junction of the post and the bar. <laughs> so the Red Wings escape one there. That baby was on a platter. Erickson saying thanks. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Look at a guy like Verbata who's got good hands too. Canucks pressing here to get on the board before the first period closes. Verbata will hustle back to get it. Verbata's oh leading their team with 10 goals too and hit the bar there. Everybody was so far down low. And I mean, Erickson made that play that they allowed them to do up the middle, expecting somebody to be there, and they weren't. No harm done. Well, they're living right, that's for sure, but a really good period by the whole team. And I'm sure Willie Desjardins, as you look at that one right there, it's like, oh, look out, please don't go in, said Jonathan Erickson. And it didn't. I don't think it hit anybody on the way, no? Right off the junction, right there. And uh, good period for the home team. Boy, lots of energy, for sure. And Brendan Smith, who had that great opportunity returning to the lineup, he gets to chat with John Keating in our Ram intermission. And Darren and Trevor are in the studio. Their scouting report on Daniel De Kaiser taking a little help from Tony Granato right there. Yes, 100th game today. And what a signing he has been. Every team in the NHL wanted Dan De Kaiser. He was a late bloomer, undrafted. There's more and more of that all the time. And it's like a, I don't know, like an unrestricted free agent, I guess. But, boy, he's a, he's a lot better than I think people expected this early. And he may be, if he continues like this, be around here for a long time. Well, I know after his freshman year at Western Michigan, Jeff Blaschel told me he's going to be a star. So he knew. Datsuk in front, off escape, cleared back to the corner as Abdicator tried to move it over to Henrik Zetterberg. Be interesting to ask Jeff, and we will, um, what made him made, you know, anything specific that made him made that comment that, that early, you know, and for him not to be drafted. Yeah. But, I mean, he's a big kid, he's got a great reach, he's a wonderful skater. I mean, I can verify that because I've been on the ice and playing with him. And boy, he can skate like a forward. He got my attention right away. Riley Shan, back of the net, turning with it. A good play to create some space for Tatar. Nyquist let it go back to the line to Quincy, a shot. That was a hot one rising, and it's out of play. Hmm. But anyway, just to finish up on DeKaiser, you know, he's he's going to be a minute muncher. He's already over 20 minutes in change with this hockey team, and a guy that's playing in his first, well, second full season, I guess, now. 
Horn and McComb. And at 20 into period number two. This is only the seventh time this season the Red Wings had had a, had had a lead after the first period. In this game number 24. The Red Wings 5 and 1 when leading after one. Tatar trying to work some magic in there along with Nyquist and Shan. I will tell you, these guys, look at here again. Nyquist, trying got, to center, couldn't. They got energy just from everywhere, right? They can't play like this every game, but my goodness. Three of these guys are just all over the place. Nyquist tried to get it to Tatar, and he and Shan will head off in a change. Back in for Higgins. And then a hook coming here to the Red Wings. It'll be uh, Nyquist going off. He got a stick in there on Bieksa, centered through, and uh, saved by Jimmy Howard. Well, Bieksa made sure that the referee was going to going to see this hook. And he pulled his hand right off the Number stick. Twenty-seven, two minutes talking. Right Quincy going, referee. not Nyquist. It's yeah. Quincy, yeah. Bieksa moving in from his defense position right here, and watch when he gets hooked. Watch what he does with his left hand. There's right hit. I mean, he could have got called from Bellingman on that play. When you look at that replay, we got hooked in the left hand, and his right hand went flying to, to Southfield. Well, and again, the National Hockey League reviews every game, every moment, and if they, no. in fact, think that's the case, his name will go on a list. Oh, so he wouldn't, yes. There's nothing else they can do except just put him on the list, eh? That's it. And play like that. On the wing, for out of the save, and it's sent wide. Even though there's no penalty involved. Right. He goes on the watch. That's correct. And if there's too many of them, then the coaches. The coach of the team starts getting fined, as does the player. Score! Oh. Wow. Lucky bounce for Vancouver, but a good finish. Lyndon Bay, top 10 in rookie scoring. It's his fifth of the season. It's a power play goal, and the Canucks within one. Well, that didn't take much time either, just like the Red Wings, but... It was the Sedins who tried to work their magic, and here's exactly what they do. They go back behind the net and then try to come to the front. And watch what happens here. It bounces off the skate. Here they switch position. They go back around to here, and then he'll come. One of the Sedins comes back to the front, try to get it there. Watch what it does. It's Cronwall's stick, and he puts it right onto the stick of Bay, who's in behind all the Red Wings, and he finishes nicely. He got checked just as Daniel Sedin got there as he was trying to shoot it. And it's 2-1, to one, just like that. So as much as the Sedins did the work, that should be an unassisted goal. It should be. Red Wings looking to regain a two-goal lead here. And Vancouver will clear it away. Brendan Smith leaves it for Kindle. 37 into period number two. Following up, here comes Weiss with room and a shot. Got blocked. Kindle trying to tie up Hanson. Hanson stayed with it. Hanson shooting and a save by Howard. And now a penalty coming. I'm wondering what the fact to begin with. Yeah. What a crazy, crazy play that was. But Kindle's probably arguing that he should have been given a penalty for tying him up. Detroit but, number two, two minutes cross checking. Oh, oh Brendan Smith gets a, a cross checking penalty after all that. See, he got hooked up right there, Kindle did. And that's what created the whole play. And he's just trying to hold on for his life. It's a pretty good job right there by Hanson to get loose through all of that and get a, a backhander. So they let the hold go both ways on yeah. that one. Yeah. And then the cross check there to Smith on yeah. Hanson. Didn't look that serious, but extended arms means you're going to get a look and a look and another look by the referee, and he made the call. So the Canucks have a chance here to tie it up just like that. Red Wing power play hasn't been near as good during the penalty kill as it was early, but you're going to have your good and bad nights. They had two against them in New Jersey the other night. So Fourth in the league at 86.7%. Third best at home is the Red Wing penalty killing unit. We'll have multiple power play goals for just the second time this season on Friday. The other one against the Rangers. As Bay is out there, he just got them even with the Sedins. Henrik to Daniel. And there's Radim Verbata, top of the left side faceoff circle. Around it goes to Daniel. Got Alex Edler at the point. 
Well, they're the hard hitting Swedish defenseman. Kept it in. Cronwall lost it. Back in the slot. Daniel back to Henrik. Went off Glendening to Daniel. Now Henrik Sedin. Down to Daniel. In front to Berbata. Kick saved by Howard. High slot shot. Edler blocked. Applicator in front of that. Next working man advantage. Edler doesn't shoot it, and he's got a stop in play and a penalty. That was a huge block by Justin Abdelkader. And the Canucks are going to go for a slash, probably. Seven white interference. Right there. Huge block. Everybody down low. And that Abdelkader stick. Not, I don't know how the heck it broke. I didn't see any penalty there. That's the, that's the penalty wow. interference. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Revenings will take it. I guess so. Amplicator checking those sticks. A lot of scoring going in them. Mentioned he's got seven goals already this year. Ten goals each of the past two years. And 15 total the previous two years before that. He's already got seven goals and 15 points this campaign. He had 28 points, a personal best last year. Settling in to be a uh, very important piece of good hockey team. Just an applicator. For a lot of reasons. Power play, toughness. Grinder. Penalty killer. And character guy. That's who up with Abdelkader. Gives it to the Kaiser. It was in his feet. To Tar. Stolen. To Tar. Waits, shoots, block. Tatar had so many. He had four block shots, two missed shots, three shots on goal in New Jersey. <laughs> His energy. He's so animated. <laughs> nice pickup coming back by Zetterberg. Sometimes you just wish Thomas Tatar, when he has the opportunity, would shoot quicker. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot, of, more moves. a lot of jukes and jives when he should be shooting properly. But he's going to learn. I mean, he hasn't been around very long. Right. But the way these guys are playing, you think they've been around longer than they really have. Red Wing belt higher power play now. We'll have to circle back at center. Vancouver's one for three on their power play now. Red Wings one for two. Nyquist is seventh power play goal. Ties for the league high. This is the only game in the National Hockey League on this Sunday. Sunday that feels like spring or summer. Weather-wise in downtown Detroit. This will be icing. They didn't click on that attempt with 27 seconds left in the man advantage. Well, a reminder, as you enjoy a really good cold one, look forward to Miller time later in the tonight's hockey game. Brought to you by Miller Lite. We have Millers all over the place here today. Miller time for sure. Red Wings with points in 12 of their past 15 games coming into this one. They've won five of six. They've only got five regulation losses, and Red Wings is just one of a few teams that have not lost two straight all season in regulation. And you're played 23 games, that's pretty good. Well, I don't think either of these teams would have been picked to where they are to be where they are when this season started for a variety of reasons. Cronwall drops back, Zetterberg moves it quickly. Cron's it in, along with Nyquist. Ten seconds left in the man advantage. Behind the goal, Franz is spinning with it. Applicator sets up in front of Ryan Miller. Zetterberg shoots, and Miller got a piece of that. Nyquist for Applicator, trying to get back on it. Spies was there. Vancouver back at full strength. Three of them come out. Red Wings are back in defensive posture, but Zetterberg playing defense. As Hansen shot it, Howard to save. Nyquist will pick it up. Nyquist watched there by Weber. He's on defense with Stanton. Who has it back to the goal, beats Zetterberg to it. Both teams one for three with the extra man here this afternoon. Nice poke one back for Brendan Smith. Oh, this stick just scattered, scattered. Weiss trying to get through. And then a shot just eluded the net. And Miller went reaching for it. Puck is underneath. Helm kicking at it. Doing what he can. Good job. Now it's into the crowd. He got sitting on it. He, could, he couldn't get that egg to hatch. Oh, boy. 
You're watching Red Wings Hockey on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. Vancouver's got 16 shots on goal to Detroit's 12, but they've been pretty good defensively when they needed to be. Datsuk there, late back check. No penalty by Zetterberg there, a nice block. And a power play by Abdul Kader, then De Kaiser. And here, a nice cover up by Glenn Denning right here. When the defenseman pinches in and Vancouver goes the other way, Glenn Denning jumps in a hole, recognizes it. Whoa, well, cover up for you. That's good puck support right there. They've been really good at that all season long, Ken. That's who's centering Zetterberg and Abdelkader, who are back together at the start of this game. Vancouver with the edge in shots this period. Penguins with a wide edge in the face-off department. Vancouver has not been a good face-off team this year. Without the likes of Manny Malhotra any longer. And a youngster like Paul Horvat in the middle. What the heck was that? It will be an icing, and the face-off will come back in the Vancouver zone. Well, I mentioned earlier, Ken, that neither one of these teams was given a whole lot of accolades before the season started. Red Wings just making the playoffs last year with all their injuries, and Vancouver with a complete overhaul from the top on down. And look where they are in the overall standings in the NHL. Pretty remarkable. Only two points for Detroit away from the or three points from the top, and Vancouver won. They've done a lot better than anybody gave them credit for, and I think they've got everybody's attention now already. Red Wings three back of Tampa Bay and Montreal atop the Atlantic. The Red Wings with a game in hand on Montreal and two on Tampa Bay. Detroit on a season-high three-game winning streak. Came right in front of their own goal. Canucks trying to capitalize off that. Henrik Sedin goes in. Out along with Radim Brabata. Behind for Daniel. Daniel has it back of the net. 21 points, one behind Henrik for the team lead. Howard's got that. Oh, hold on. Well, Willie Desjardins, his uh, first year as head coach in the National Hockey League, way back when, he was head coach for eight years in Medicine Hat in the Western Junior Hockey League, and Darren Helm played for him in Medicine Hat for three of those seasons when Darren Helm, one of those years, scored 41 goals playing for Willie Desjardins, the most he's ever scored at any level. No kidding. Yeah. My former tenderman, Billy Holdebaugh. From Speedy Creek, they call it. With third Bronco. And Derek Dorsey, who plays for Willie Dar Desjardins, also played him for him earlier in junior. Pretty good program out there. And Desjardins was head coach of Texas in the American Hockey League for a couple seasons. He won the Calder Cup last season as champions, just like Grand Rapids had done previous to that. And was an associate coach for the Dallas Stars for a, a couple of years as well. So a well-liked guy, Willie Desjardins. He was much sought after during the offseason after winning the Calder Cup, just yeah. like after Jeff Blasio won. His name started to surface. And you know Jeff will be a head coach in the National Hockey League before long somewhere. Well, it's, and I'll be icing against Detroit. People wonder, you know, why do organizations let guys go? But you know what? It's no different than Detroit having all their assistant coaches move on. And Jim Neal probably could have done something to prevent him from moving on. But they, you know what? They develop people just like players sometimes. And uh, they allow them to they get an opportunity to better themselves to move on. And uh, that's a good thing. Yeah. So... Even though, but they're set with Lindy Rupp over there in Dallas right now. And again, the Dallas Stars will be coming into town next Thursday night on the 4th of December. To meet the Red Wings here at the Joe. Chris Higgins. And Howard will hold on to the shot from him. Five goals in the season for Higgins. Came over from Florida in 2011. A nice unit with Nick Benino in the middle. They're the center they got in the Ryan Kessler deal. And that's where many people wondered about the Canucks this year and losing Ryan Kessler. He didn't want to be there. Roberto Luongo didn't want to be there. So they bring in Ryan Miller. And you know what? And with Willie Desjardins in for John Tortorella and Jim Benning now as general manager. In for Mike Gillis and Trevor Linden in there. The whole organization's changed and it's just been a, a whole new world for them. Changed the culture basically yep. uh, overnight. And you don't know what you're going to get when that happens. But they got two pretty good hockey players in Spiza and Benito sure in, the, in the deal for Kessler. And I like Brian Kessler. I'd yep. love to have him on my team. 
But this Benino had a really good year last year for Anaheim, and obviously they had to give up something to get it. And uh, they decided to make that deal, and you're right, Kessler had some issues there, and it was time to move on. I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, even as, uh, as fans wonder, you know, not that they hate the city or the fans or anything, but you get into a place sometimes long enough, and Kessler's been there a while, and it was time for a fresh start, and he got it in Anaheim. Benino Mick, who you just spoke of, 101 points in 212 games, seven goals, third most on Vancouver. And uh, he's been really good in the middle, a former sixth round pick of San Jose. Great skater. 2007. Really good skater. Those guys, Higgins and Benito, along with Burroughs, who's having a rekindled year, have been really good for Desjardins, and it takes the pressure off of Sadine, for sure, when it comes to the offense. The Sedins are back out there against Zetterberg, Gatsuk, and Applicator. Sedins with Brad and Verbata. Daniel back of the net. Henrik threw it back to the line and a shattered stick from Weber. Another one. And Tanif, rather, as it just blew up on him. Gatsuk back in the slot, just too far for Erickson. As Tanif, without a stick, tries to handle Erickson. Daniel Sedin on the left wing. Played game 1,000 a week ago, did Daniel Sedin. Making a lot more goals with fewer points in his career than Henrik. Daniel's the goal scorer. Henrik for the setup guy. Quite a huge difference this year, though. No, it's reversed this year. Yeah. The Exa. Puts it into the corner. Quincy waiting for it to come free. And perfect spot to take it away to Tar. Lifts the bouncer in and lets Nyquist go in there against the aforementioned Lucas Spisa. Spisa's minutes have come way up too. The Canucks missing on the blue line. Dan Hamus out with an injury. November 20th. Spisa's been playing a whole lot more. Upwards of 23 minutes a night. Now up four from what he was used to. But the Canucks really miss Hamus in the back end. Well, I think, quite frankly, it wasn't all John Tortorella's fault. It was that it may not have been a good fit for John's coaching style and the way the Canucks like to play. There were a lot more issues than that than just Tortorella last year to have them in such disarray. Brendan Smith's pass over the head of Helm, and Helm will get down there with his feet and a gate and ice. Ryan Stanton chipped feet. it, loose puck in front! Oh, Bronson couldn't bury it. Oh. That's why Speedy Creek comes from the speed of Helm. Oh my gosh, that's where he learned how to fly. And Franzen got all tied up and couldn't get it up over Ryan Miller. So Franzen misses a chance here. When we come back, Jimmy Howard continues to move up the Red Wing ladder in career wins. More on that in a moment. Wings Flare Fact brought to you by Motor City Casino on Mr. Jimmy Howard. Look at Terry Sajak, Chris Osgood, Terry Lumley. What a great goaltender. Leafs and Red Wings he was, and Roger Crozier at the bottom. What an acrobatic goalie he was. And Jimmy Howard there next to him, waiting to go even with Mr. Lumley if he can win tonight. And as good as Jimmy's been, he's getting much more offensive support this year than he did a season ago, too, which helps. Another through a crowd will grab it with Applicator right in front. Yeah, right another hold on. The guys were, uh, for some strange reason, there were. So much better, better result-wise when the monster was in that last year, but Jimmy admittedly had a year that uh, he, he wouldn't like to repeat, and he's rebounded from that very, very nicely this year. Shane on this draw with Benino, who won it. Now that's center Quincy. The next carry on, Alexander Burroughs into the Red Wing zone and a save by Howard and he'll hold on. Stay tuned later in the game, gang, when we'll select the Fox Sports Detroit Red Wings player of the game presented by McDonald's new fresh baked McCafe blueberry muffin. Okay. Lots of choices so far, and he's one of them. Red Wings with seven giveaways in the first period. Connect didn't have any. 
So Howard on several of those has to be really sharp. But now we got a one-shot game. Canucks have scored on their power play. That's out of play off a direct face-off win. Yeah, it was Paul Horvat taking advantage of Miller having to come in on that drop. Paul Horvat, the uh, rookie for Vancouver, number 53, just 19 years old. The ninth overall pick a year ago for Corey Schneider. That was the deal when Schneider, whom the Red Wings just beat on Friday, went to New Jersey, and the Canucks got the uh, ninth overall pick, and they took Paul Horvat. Who had three assists in the win over Chicago. His family here, he's from London, Ontario. His family, his brother, his dad, here tonight to watch him play. As Miller takes a shot in on his brother. And then good steal. Come up with the puck. There's some strong work. He's not only that. Got out of there, Yurko. Drew a penalty kid. Sure did. And Red Wings are gonna go to a power play. That's moving your feet. And again, Dorset. Red. And Smith is right there to back up Yurko. Dorset looking to cause trouble. Once again. Hey, Corbell, in the right hand. Smith working. As soon as that puck was intercepted, they grabbed a hold of him. I'd say holding, but penalty nonetheless. Ryan Stanton picked up on waivers from Chicago in 2013. Sits in the box. Now Zetterberg gets waved out. Red Wings with so many centers to choose from. Here comes Franzen. He played so much center in his career. He used to be a natural center. But again, Vancouver, who was hopeful in the face-off department in the first and was terrible the other night, albeit in victory over Columbus, improving here in the second period. Henrik Zetterberg, first power play unit with the applicator and Nyquist, Cronwall and Franzen. Cronwall getting it back in. Zetterberg couldn't handle it. Back down the ice from... Alex had Kevin Zetterberg lose that position to draw and, and then Franzen who had, doesn't play as much center he loses it it cost them really 40 seconds before they're even going to get back in the zone for a second time to get set up. Nyquist carries back in belt higher power play Nyquist with a good move and another one in front that was blocked and Vancouver able to nudge it out to center ice. He's hurt down there Burroughs and Franzen with a collision in front of Ryan Miller. Oh boy, he's cut badly. Yeah, he is. He's got the visor too, and it's up high. I wonder if it was a skate. The collision as he as he as he cut from the, the, the right side, and I think he got a skate in the face. Riding Franz and oh, skate. Oh my, right there, right there. You see, applicator makes contact with Pearl from the backside, and then you see him go to his face. Like Franz and knew it too. And he's not laughing. Believe me, it can happen to anybody. And you feel it when your skates hit something, even when they're not on the ice. Actually, more so than when they are on the ice. It's just an unfortunate uh, timing. Face and skate come together at the right time, so let's hope he's okay. As much as they've grandfathered in the visors, and most wear them now, still sometimes just gets underneath. Oh, God. So yeah, you you got to have a, you, you'd have to have a full, complete goaltender shield. Like a, like a cage to protect yourself. Or from, in college. You know, yeah. 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 To protect yourself from that. And actually, sometimes when the way these guys block block shots with these composite sticks, I don't know why they don't wear them. I swear to God. Puck's going over 100 miles an hour for most everybody on the team. In the old days, maybe one or two guys on the team could shoot at that good. Yep. Sean Mathias never played for Detroit, but drafted by them. It's outside. Hanson were to touch, and he doesn't. No one in the Red Wings traded Mathias to Florida for Bertuzzi. He went on a scoring rampage. A little worry there for a few moments, and then it settled down. Stephen Weiss, former Panther. That's who tried to center Chan. Second power play unit out for Detroit. Kendall waited to tar. Oh. Couldn't bury it. That's who scores. Oh wow. It gets through. Riley 
Shane makes a heck of a play right here. Big right reach out. Look at that reach. I don't know how he did that. And how does this puck get in the net? Is it that too? Or was it Vancouver? I think Vancouver scored the goal on themselves. Watch this. It may be Spiesemek. Yeah. Now, Tatar, I don't know how this got stopped. I don't know. I still don't know. That hit Miller. Pavel reaches out. Watch this. Watch the stick of this guy right here. Watch. Oh, boy. Spiesemek. Now, I think Pavel's going to get credit for the he goal. Will. He, he touched, touched the last. Puck. Yeah. Yeah. But a great... that six goal. Oh, my. But Spiza put it in his own net. And the Red Wings have another power play goal. And a big time for it, too, because Vancouver was pushing with the score 2-1. to one. Off the backboards, right out in front. And that's the fourth time the past seven games the Red Wings have scored two power play goals in the same game. The eighth time this year they've done it. And four in the past seven. Jimmy Howard just kicked out another save. And the power play continues to be red hot. And that's the first time this season, Mick, that the Canucks have allowed two power play goals in the same game. Well, it, it isn't often that uh, they're giving up three goals in a game, but uh, we're just winding her down in the second period here, and I think Datsuk's going to get credit for it. As it officially goes, and we'll take a break, and it goes off the goalpost, off Benino, skate, into the net. 38,000 points on that one. Wreck this game break is brought to you by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Pistons and Warriors over on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. Off the rebound, Josh Smith, Brandon Jennings. Back to Smith for the easy one-hand jam. Pistons up 24-21 at the end of one. We'll join this one in progress right after the Wings game. Guys, back to you with the Joe. Pavel getting his eighth goal in his 14th point in his 13th game. How hot is that? Tatar and Kindle getting the assists. 14-24. Weiss to Kindle. Hit the goal post. Same spot as Rivada, I think. Pretty close. Maybe just about uh, six inches down on that right post. And the Weiss attempt plants off a stick. Weiss with Elm and Franzen. Even though Franzen's played so much center, he actually still has three centers out there. Yeah. The absence of uh, Pavel Datsuk, who's gone up to join Zetterberg and Applicator. There, he almost comfortable on who he's playing with. That was a really nice play right there. And his eyes in the back of his head, known for his teammate is, made a beautiful slip pass. And created that story change. He's been so good on face-offs and one of the best in the league on the road there and on the season. And Brad Richardson got it toward the goal. Howard will find it and hold it. Gets the action live when the Wings take on the Panthers. That's the Florida Panthers, Tuesday, December 2nd. The first 10,000 fans receive a Henrik Zetterberg holiday ornament. For tickets, call 313-471-7575. Ticket executives are standing by. Here's Kindle just a moment ago. The whip, whip of that stick. Yeah, right square off the old crossbar. In that case, it's a nice sound for Ryan Miller to hear. Wings trying to get to 33 points and climb within one point of top spot in the Eastern Conference. And in Tampa, Montreal. Again, this is the only game in the National Hockey League on this Sunday. Ken Daniels, Mickey Redmond with you and our Fox Sports Detroit crew. Riley Shane does some strong work along the boards. Flip one back there for Thomas Tatar. Back to the line to Kaiser the shot. Blocked in front. Shane getting to it first. Nyquist behind the net. Stays with it. The next Benino gets met there by Tatar. Sheehan finally relieved to the puck. And the Canucks Richardson moves it through Benino. The Kaiser stood up. Oh, this puck. Here's a break. Zetterberg on the right wing. Three Canucks getting back. Zetterberg shooting one. And Miller will grab it. Miller made it look pretty easy. Zetterberg knew all along he had nowhere else to go, but short side top shelf. And Ryan Miller said, I don't think so, Z. Not this time. 
put it right into his glove. Nice step up by DeKaiser. The lead pass the Canucks are scrambling there in a line change. See Red Wings get caught like that a lot of times this year, but get away with it most of the time. Sederberg with two more helpers today. The team leading 23 points now. Datsuk gets pushed in along the board. Zetterberg to help back to Datsuk. Sure enough, he came up with it. What a play. Erickson back to the line. Miller the save. Loose in the slot. Applicator across. Zetterberg back in front. It's tipped up high. Pavel Datsuk had it along the boards and managed to come through two Canucks with the puck. Really sure that piece you got. For Datsuk Deacon people. That is funny. He can do that to people. He's like a phantom. Advocator to center. Took a hit. And Spiza stepped up. He's going to call that icing on him. Just on the other side of center. The Advocator saw the hit coming. He really had to, you know, get rid of it. So he got it deep. And here's the play you're talking about. Here comes BX. BX is thinking, I'm going to take care of this. But Jennifer bails him out for a second. And then watch that to come back here. He gets the puck. Sees Spiza coming. Says, not this time. Protects it with his rear end. He sidesteps Bieksa completely. And then the pass hits a skate on the way to Abdelkader. He's remarkable. Yep. Really, really something to watch. And boy, aren't we lucky to have him every time we get behind a microphone. So we get number 13 to look at. And number 13 just tied up. Go Horvath. Smartly in front. Now, that's it. Out of block. Redwings trying to get a change going here in the final two minutes of period number two. Vancouver not now out shooting Detroit, but not out scoring them. Back to the line, quick shot to the goal and just tip wide. Canucks pressing here to get within one late stages of the second. Knocked out of the air by Stanton, but without a high stick. From the Red Wings side of center, Vancouver shoots it in. Brendan Smith to get it. Smith in his return after missing five. Need four points the previous five games before being hurt. That's knocked down with a high stick, they say. It did break up a Red Wing attempt. Coming up on our intermission report, brought to you by MGN Grand Detroit. Trevor and Darren in the studio. And the Red Wings lately lethal power play. Again, four times the past seven games have scored twice, eight times on the season. And in the previous seven, when the Red Wings have scored at least two power play goals in the game, they're 5 0 and 2. And they're down 22 in 23 and two thirds games. Think about it this month from 9% to around 23% now. Great diving play coming back by Luke Glenn Denny. They put it back to the line. Edler with a shot. Off to the other side, Tanev. Back to Edler. Another shot. Howard made the save. to keep it along the backboards did Quincy picked it through with 15 to go in the second period Richardson got tied up with the referee in came Matthias and the Kaiser's there out of the crowd Drew Miller your go ahead Glendening tries to get past 40 minutes in the books the Red Wings lead by two through two Pavel Datsuk getting the goal in the second. After Vancouver's Vey had scored in a power play. So three of four goals in this game have come on the power play. We'll send it to Trevor in the studio. They're 8-0-1. Well, this is the start of a four-game homestand. An important one it is. It's part of 9 of 12 at home. They've won the first two. Three of those 12 on the road. They've won the first one there in Jersey the other night. Brad and Verbata with a shot that's knocked away by Howard. That suit couldn't get it out. Franzen and Zetterberg to start the third period. A little bit of a change here for the Red Wings. These applicators not on the top line to at least start. It's Franzen up there. Franzen's had a pretty good afternoon. Datsuk with a good move. Put it back out the other side. Zetterberg over to get it. 
And that's blocked away. The batter met by Quincy. And off the glove of Daniel Sedin, watched by his countryman Henrik Zetterberg. And the top scoring lines will head off. Oh, that hit Quincy. He was felt by that shot. As Tatar and Nyquist came up ice, Quincy will go to the bench. So the Kaiser on the uh, back end here with Jonathan Erickson now. We're missing a guy, Ken. We're going to try to figure out who that is. It might be Abdulkader. It could have been on a block shot in the second period. Right. And Quincy's just gone down yeah. the road. Yeah. Well, that's why Fonzin took the spot of Abdulkader exactly. on the top line to start the third period. See if we can get that verified. Quincy's walking it off. And Abdi is, Abdi is the one that's missing so far. And there's <laughs> Quincy's going, you've got two million square feet to shoot this buck and you got to hit me in the ankle. He's okay though. So we'll see if we can get an update on Justin Abdelkader. I, I didn't see anything happen later. He did finish the period as far as I know. Howard had to block that shot and he'll hold on to it. Look at that for 1239 after two periods. He played a lot in the first, actually. First period, he was close to eight minutes. Yeah, 645, 646 in the first period for Abdelkader. So. Well, now Glendening will come on. Weiss will go off. So Glendening with Helm and Franzen. And that's why you want as many centers out there as you can. When Denning gets tossed out, so Darren Helm will come in. And the Red Wings have the face. The Red Wings on 58% of the draws through 40 minutes here tonight. Helm had to go off his stick. Ryan Stanton for Vancouver to Brad Richardson. Out with Matthias and Lyndon Bay. Bay, number seven, is the lone Canucks goal unassisted on the power play. That shot sailed wide of Howard. It moves Stanton. Quickly closing on him was Weiss. Ooh. He's gave it away. They tried to do that breakout up the middle. That one didn't work. Richardson pestered by Brendan Smith. Sent back into the corner. Going down heavily was Weiss. Richardson kept it in. Ford back at the blue line. Giving it to Stanton. The defenseman down low. Passed in front. Hit a leg. Brendan Smith kept control of it. Now Weiss with it. Still can't get it out. Franzen will try now, and he's away as the Canucks in the midst of a change. Franzen crosses with Helm. Franzen delays, put it in, and Miller will just chuck it off to the corner. Franzen, though, has it again. Now Drew Miller comes up. Helm blocked the outlet feed. Kept it alive. Yannick Weber turns. And Vancouver to center ice. In with it was Derek Dorsett. Couldn't get very far. Lost his footing. Kevin BX on the far side. Passed ahead by Spisa. Glendening for Detroit. Tapped it along for DeKaiser. Yurko with him. Yurko at center. Tipped it over to Miller. Tipped it through. Miller keeps on going. Drew with a shot that got deflected off BX's stick up and out of play. Get the $59 fan pack when the Wings take on the Panthers Tuesday, December 2nd, or see them battle the Stars Thursday the 4th. You'll get two tickets, two food vouchers, and two soft drinks. For tickets, go to DetroitRedWings.com. 320 into the third period, two-goal lead for Detroit. Mike Babcock likes to say you got to keep your foot on the gas here and don't play defensive hockey. Intercepted by Zetterberg. With Helm and Datsun. One way you look at it, Redmonds have so many centers, there's always three centers on the line of the field. As Helm they do. picks up some time as they'll juggle things without Abdelkader now. So that's no joke anymore. There's just a lot of guys that have played the center position on a regular basis over the years. Back to get it was Cronwall. Kept it in right back in on Miller. Bouncing puck wide open, Zetterberg, as the Canucks in the midst of a change. 
They got over quickly. Ryan Stanton for Vancouver. For Radin Verbatim. Checked immediately. Now Nyquist moves in there on Weber to Stanton to redeem Verbatim. Well-traveled veteran. Verbatim's been with Phoenix, Tampa, Chicago, Carolina, Colorado. For a long time, there. Eh? Yeah. Nice job with the Canucks. His Nyquist shot will be handled by Ryan Miller. Well, speaking of Radom Verbata, let's take a look at an interesting little factoid, as he used to call it. Looking back, the Sedins in 1999 were drafted one and two by the Canucks, second and third position overall. And we'll have you that in a second. Can we get a break. But some other interesting people were in that draft. Oh, that seemed to hit the post. Nyquist back for Tatar. The Kaiser. Shane back to the net. Nyquist over his stick. The exit. Burrows is okay after being cut by Franz and Skate earlier in the game. Spiza. Get that ahead and sent the rest of the way by Nick Benino. Jimmy Howard out to stop it. You mentioned these Sabines, Nick, taking second and third overall in 99. Henrik wears. Well, Daniel wears 22 because he was taken second. And Henrik wears 33 because he was taken third. <laughs> Well, it was really quite, quite remarkable if you remember back then. And Brian Burke had orchestrated that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they, I guess when you're drafting people out of Europe in those days, it was really a trap. They team. wanted to be together. Yes, they did. Here's Weiss over to Franzen. The other side, Helm will go after. Erickson moved in. Stanton for the Canucks. Up through the middle by Weber. He was hit by Miller, and the puck never did get deep. Jonathan Erickson with his head up. Drew Miller kicked at it. Flecked it away to Glenn Denning. Back from Miller. Back in front. Yurko getting to it quick. Six points the past six games for Yurko. After he had just two the first 12. The little respite of his for three games seemed to right. get his attention real good. And after that 12, he had the three-game healthy scratch. This will go wide of Howard, so... We'll give the icing here to Detroit. Good job. Erickson was there. Erickson is right. So back to that 99 draft. There's the guys that you see on the top of the list. These guys over here, you don't know are even in it. It was Detterberg who was taken 210. Goaltender Miller, unbelievable, 138. And then Verbata, 212. Unbelievable. And they're just, they say down there, they go, they're uh, additional people that are worthy of mentioning. It's unbelievable. But the Zadines were second and third in that big draft. Timeout's been called here by Vancouver. So while we have a moment, Chris Osgood is uh, certainly in our thoughts this afternoon, uh, who's uh, not with us, of the, uh, the passing of his stepdad, Peter. And that's why he had to leave New Jersey and... Look what Jimmy Howard has done in the thoughts here for Chris Osgood and his stepfather, Peter. He's got Peter and Parapalkin, his last name, a PP on the knob of his stick. And there's Peter and uh, Chris's mom, Joy, and uh, the whole family just devastated so unexpectedly. Peter was to come to the game this afternoon and bring Chris's children to the game. He uh, passed away on Friday, and again, our condolences to the family, and we hope you're all getting through this okay. Our thoughts are with you, as are Jimmy's for sure. And I heard his death suit's got it. Hanson tries to get up. He's badly hurt as Smith fires one. Ooh, and that hit his own man in front as Yurko went down, so there are bodies everywhere. And look how mad Hanson is. He just banged his stick against... The boards at the Vancouver bench, he is irate. He thought the play should have been stopped, but the Red Wings had possession. He was hurt. Yurko just got belted. We'll be back in a moment. 
I think Tom Cowell was just on with the Situation Room in Toronto. He wanted to see if, in fact, maybe a call was missed. Yannick Hansen was so mad, he's saying, you know what, it's your own man's stick. It Hold. wasn't Zetterberg's. Watch here. Hold here, guys, right there. Watch the stick. It's, a, it's under Zetterberg's left arm. And yes, here's Hansen coming across here. Watch what happens. Bang. He, there's no way for him to know that, it, that it's his own man's stick. He's got. He's looking the other way. That's right. But, that's why he was so mad at the bench, wanted a call. Well, none should have been made. Good for Cowell, even though they, that's not a reviewable situation right. in, in the world today. It will be eventually. But he's going thinking, you know what? If we miss that, at least I got to go and apologize. That's right. But Good not necessarily game. make up for it. But uh, yeah. Toronto said the same thing as we just saw. You know what? No, you guys didn't miss a thing. Yeah, and Hanson broke his stick over the uh, boards at the bench. He was so mad, but he was wrong. Later on, you just go tell him, you know what? You're going to have to, unfortunately, kid, you got to go watch the replay, and you'll see it wasn't a little player. Good pressure by Henrik Sedin forced that turnover from Cronwall, and now Cronwall's without a stick as the Sedins try to work it for Bata. Goes to Henrik. And now Zetterberg without a stick. As he's given his off to Cronwall. Now it comes back to Henrik Sedin. There's a shot. Howard stopped that. Let go by Edler. Edler with it again. Shot went off the skate. Boy, Edler plus five entering play today in the National Hockey League. I say that because he was minus 39 last year. Worst in the NHL. People are saying, what's going on? He and John Tortorella never met. And he's having a terrific season now. Has the puck and plays it back to the exit. Well, Alex Edler is coming back to the other he used to be from a few seasons back. Another busted stick and no call. And the fans aren't happy as Nyquist just lost his. A lot of them probably saw the game in New Jersey and figured, boy, these calls are frequent. Why aren't they calling? Right. Especially the way it went in New Jersey, the same player that dropped, well, I say dropped, dropped the stick twice. <laughs> yeah. That's right. That was uh, Travis Sager. And right. yeah, it did go down awfully easy on the one. Nyquist goes up after it. Brendan Smith. Boisterous crowd here on a Sunday afternoon. Another sellout crowd here at the Joe. This one was a tough ticket. 157th consecutive sellout here at Joe Louis Arena. Over Linden Bay stick. And just wrapped right back in by Franzi. Carried back in and knocked away. And Conwall got in front of that. Attempted feed for Tanner. He was checked by Drew Miller. Miller out with Yurko and Glenn Denning as the Canucks are in the midst of a change here. Vancouver on a three-game winning streak. They've won six of their past seven on the road. Best in the NHL the month of November that comes to a close. Howard to save, kicked it away, and another one. He's got that in acrobatic fashion. Nicely done. That's the Sedin's pressing. Nicely done. Confident supreme from goaltender Howard again. 23rd shot and goal, it looks like, for the Vancouver Canucks. Make that 26. We'll be back after this. So what we've got, gang, here is a 3-1 game, 9.41 to go. Dustin Applicator did not come out for the third period, and here is why we think. Lucas Pisa hits him at center ice on an icing call late in the second period. And after that, there's a grimace on the face of Abdul Kader. Well, that would look like he got a pretty good bang on his left side of the upper body there. You can see him trying to skate it off at that point, thinking, oh boy, that hurts more than it should. The right arm looked pretty good. Not so sure about the left. That's the only disappointing news out of... 
past the halfway point here in the third period. There's the top units oppose one another again. Vancouver, though, will make a change in the back end as Helm comes in. Satterberg the shot, and out to stop that, Ryan Miller. And he's got uh, cut uh, in a change there. They scrambled back at the last second, though. And here's today's fun fact brought to you by Southgate Lincoln. Well, hmm. and on top of that, man, of the 460 games, when both Daniel and Henrik get a point, now neither is a point here this afternoon. Of 460 career games, when both Daniel and Henrik get a point, Vancouver has only lost 92 of them. And when those two are going, the Canucks rarely lose. And the Red Wings all have managed to uh, pull them off. Well, Henrik doesn't have a shot after a few periods. Daniel has three. And Daniel is more of a shooter than Henrik. Quincy felt back pressure coming. Drew Miller just bumped with brother Ryan. Gave him a bit of a shove there. Glendening, top three. Miller trying to fight for space. Glendening went back to the line to DeKaiser. Had nowhere to go, so put it off the backboards. Over there, Derek Dorsey. Good keep in by Yurko with those great hands. Huck bounces over to the near side. Spiza made the play. Burroughs will get it in the rest of the way for the Canucks. Jonathan Erickson tipped it. Nyquist helped it along. Burroughs coming back on Tatar. Here's Thomas Tatar. And a shot deflect up into the netting and out of play. Tatar with nine goals and 13 points in the season. And I'm giving 14 now with an added assist. Join us again Tuesday on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. When the Red Wings welcome in the Florida Panthers. Our coverage begins at 7 with Red Wings Live. As Red Wings Panthers, Tuesday at 7 on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. You get to see your, your buddy Spuddy. Buddy Gallant you're talking about. Number, goal, number 17, Eisenman's left winger. Yep. 40 goal scorer, tough as nails. Real character guy, boy, Gallant. Florida coming on a bit. Nine, boy, six and six. They have, I mean... Yeah, six regulation losses. The yep. Wings have five. All right. Woo. Penalty side. A uh, uh, high stick. Oh, my. I mean, it was a nice play, all right. Knocked down with a high stick. Yeah, Matthias. <laughs> what did you say? Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, I think that's a little bit high. Yeah, <laughs> there's the contact. Yep. Shoulder level is the... Is the ruling, and yeah, uh, it's a little bit high. Come on, John. You know better than that. Crossbar hype for goals <laughs> and uh, shoulder for knocking it down. And I'm really interested to see uh, Aaron Eckblad, too. Top pick for Florida play. Scores! It's redirected in front of the net, and it's a 3-2 game. As Weber, who's got a great shot, let it go. And it was tipped in front past Howard, and Vancouver within one. Well, that came right off the faceoff, too. Boy. How do you find that through that mess? Holy jumping. Did it hit Matthias' a stick? It might have. So he got repaid for the high stick. And off a skate in front, Hindles, oh, and exactly. he was tied up with Brad Richardson. So we'll see whom they give it to, and they may give it to someone and then later change it to someone else. But it is 3-2. Right now, Red Wings continue to lead. Oh! And they've given it to Weber. We'll see if that doesn't change, but Bay has a goal and an assist if it stays the same. Howard will reflect it to the corner. Well, Vancouver hanging around. Well, not unusual in this NHL anymore. Edmonds had a 4-1 lead with Ottawa and hung on to 
win it 4-3 the other night. Then the other night in Jersey, what a comeback that was. Intercepted here at center. Tatar took a shot and again deflected up and out of play. Having a tough time getting those shots through to the net. Thomas Tatar. And Vancouver within a goal now. They're on a road trip. Vancouver is. This is game number two of seven. They're playing seven and 12 nights. All right, now it'll be, this is the uh, first of six in ten nights. And all in the Eastern Conference, they're six and one against the East. That's a monster road trip. Twelve days. That's a lot of packing. Well, they're, they're used to that, those teams. I remember LA used to go on those 14, 15 day road trips. Scores! Point shot down! This thing ever have eyes. It might have deflected off a of Vancouver Canuck in front of the net, but Miller had no idea where it was, and it went in the short side. Wow. Oh, yeah. She hit right there. Benino? Right there, I think. Right there. Yeah, Miller never saw it. It was by him. He had no idea where it was. What a timely goal that was for Detroit in a one-shot game. Oh, my, oh, my. Well, it's a two-goal lead again. A minute ten after Vancouver scored, the Kaiser answers. So Shane and Yurko assisting. Wow, Yurko's got seven points his past seven games now. Pretty good for mostly fourth line duty in there, too. Well, that's the, the one advantage that Mike Babcock. Here's a steal. Senator Wick shoots. Oh, and Miller oh. stopped him. <laughs> Balanced scoring, Ken. We're getting it from a lot of directions now, and that's a coach's dream, boy. Higgins going for the far side. That got deflected up into the mix. For a stoppage to play with 5.32 to go. And with that, we will pay some bills and come back to Kaiser with a two goal lead for the Red Wings again. Trevor Thompson here with a studio update. The Pistons are at the Palace hosting Stephen Curry and the Golden State Warriors. They're on an eight game winning streak. Right now, the Pistons are trailing the Warriors 67 45. That game is in the third quarter. We'll get to that as soon as the Red Wing game is over right here on Fox Sports Detroit. But in the meantime, let's get you back to the Joe for the finish of the Canucks of the Wings. Kenny, Mick, take it away. Well, big boy play of the game. There's Mick and Linda DeKaiser. They're a happy couple there. And son Danny has just made it four to two. And we think it went off Benino right here in front of the net. Came over this way and down and passed Ryan Miller. He had no idea where the puck was at all. But a big goal for DeKaiser and the Red Wings to make it 4-2 with less than six minutes to go. Doesn't have to hit him by much. When underneath is right bad to boot. Well, the Red Wing defense after a bit of a slow start has really begun to, led by Cronwell, kick it in. Remember that one night to the comeback Detroit had here? Two goals late by Kendall and Smith. and so They've been racking up the points and goals. Led by that guy who, who we pointed out earlier. Here comes a break. Here's a break. Yeah. Drew Miller trying Wait, to get through on Brother Ryan all along. Oh, oh Drew. Ryan stopped him and Spiza did just <laughs> enough. <laughs> Go back and tell him nice save, Drew. <laughs> oh, he might not get a better catch. <laughs> they're going, what are they thinking? Oh, they're, they're just going, oh, geez. Oh, wow. Oh, geez. There, you know what Mom just said? Way to go, both you guys. <laughs> Dean's still stunned by it all. Holy jumping jeepers, look at this. Uh, Drew now, didn't get much of a chance. You know, if the ref were really friendly, he would have given a penalty, penalty shot. shot. Exactly, no, there's Ken. a hook. Yeah, I mean, he didn't get much of a chance. Rolling puck and everything else, and Drew's going, well, you got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> Oh, boy. Danny DeKaiser will have a memory now of his 100th career game, getting the goal in this afternoon, too. Tana took a shot wide of Howard. Over to the keeping in is Edler. Now to Tana again. 
Alex Edler fanned on it. And back to the line to Tanner. For Edler. Bronson with a block and a broken stick. Brad Richardson behind the goal. He didn't get it. Bay will move it. Bay gets pushed to the corner. Weiss, Helm, and Franzen hemmed in here, and the goaltender's gone to the bench for an extra skater. With 4.35 to go in the game, Vancouver down by two, and their net is empty. Franzen tries to get it out here and stick in the way. Got to get a stick. Six skaters for the Look Canucks, out. net empty. Wide open. The shot saved by Howard. Jumping. Bedlam. Hit the puck. Matthias let it go. Vancouver still with it. At the line, Edler to Tana. Six skaters against five. Back to the line it comes. Franz has managed to get a stick. Back in front. Big That's save. Good. Howard on Matthias. Mm. He's had some great opportunities here. Still all Canucks. Richardson waits the shot. Loose side of the goal. They score. Yeah. With 350 to play in the net empty. Vancouver within a goal again. Mm. Boy, so you gotta give Willie Desjardins credit. He had Franzen without a stick, the Red Wings running around, hemming him in, and he pulled Miller in about 40 seconds after Ryan was pulled, Vancouver scored. You gotta wonder whether they did choose that time with Franzen without a stick to pull him. I mean, this puck kicked in. This puck kicked in. They gotta look at this play. It's Bay again, he's gotta go off of this. The shot from Richardson. Where did it go off of him? It went off his left foot. Now, the only question is, was it kicked? They're looking at this. They'll look at, they look at every Watch point. his left foot. Oh, he did kick it. But did he get his stick on it at the end? I, that's another question. Oh, my. He did kick that foot, even though sideways. Watch his left foot. We got a better angle than that. I don't think he got this, and this goal is going to be ruled off. Watch this. I don't think it should. But I think this play should be allowed to stand. Well, they've been much more liberal, Mick, so we'll have to wait yeah. on that one. Now, well, again, it cannot go off the goaltender. It cannot go off a defensive player after you kick it and still have it count. That's not a part of it. It's whether the league, the ruling in Toronto in the Situation Room is a distinct kicking right. motion. Here's what I'm going to give you on this one. He kicked it with his left foot. It might have hit his right foot, and then it might have hit Howard and went in. The only question's going to be here for those guys in Toronto. Is it at a distinct kicking motion or not? That's it. I don't know. Uh, the call on the ice was goal. But again, that doesn't really matter on this one. There's very very few times on this one are you going to have a gray area of distinct and non-distinct. This, this is a long block. That's a kill. That, that angle there, he is guilty. Guilty, guilty on that angle for sure. And if his stick didn't touch it after right. he hit his skate, look at the fortuitous bounce. It took, I know. maybe not, just to find its way in. Right. It may not be for Vancouver, but if, in fact, it's ruled a goal. And uh, mm. without his stick getting on it. So Tom Cowell, Tim Peels on the phone to the Situation Room in Toronto. Yeah. Where they uh, review everything. And again, from the league at the start of this year, it was to be much more liberal on what was a distinct kicking motion. Did his stick touch it? Didn't appear to. If his stick did, it Back would it up, be a boys. good goal. I don't know on this one. Let's see. Here it comes. No. Hard to tell. You That's can't really tell. There's a, there, we have a better angle on that, and we will get it. It almost looks like it did on that one, but that's that's not really a good angle. There's the kick. There's no question about that. Now. There's the touch. Is it a touch? Doesn't look like he touched it there. You can redirect a puck. Right. Ah. This is mid-area. I, I don't know if that's a distinct kicking motion under the liberal rules that they're now going. That's a, a redirection. His skate came off the ice a little bit. These are tough, and, and the league knew, there. even being more liberal, these are you, tough. You just hit on, the, on a good point. Skate off the ice, and it was when he kicked that puck. Well, I don't think we're gonna he see. got I, it with the stick. But. They do a great job there, and I don't envy those guys right. and all that they have this to look at through the year. It's a tough call. This could go either way. The one, the one view that's very incriminating is from our side of the ice in a high view. It would be our play-by-play -play camera, I think. And it looks down from Jimmy Howard's left and where you see Verbata open his left foot. Here it is right here. Watch this one. There it is. And we're going to listen to Tim Peel right, right now with the call. There you go. 
After video review, the call on the ice stands, we have a good goal. Okay. Yeah, as I say, more liberal and, again, a redirect more than they viewed as a distinct kicking motion. So it's a 4-3 game. That one, to me, is about as difficult as it's going to get on kick or no kick. We went to the league meetings in New York. Unless you get a pick. The broadcasters do, yeah. and they showed us all the plays. What was his and right. what wasn't his. It, 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 it's one, mind boggling, and it's tough thing, to tell. The one thing we don't know is if he hit the puck after. And that would end all kicking motions. Right. That it would. Nonetheless, Bias will get an assist along with Richardson. Bay has his second of the game along with an assist. So he's got all three points. The Red Wings have managed to keep the Sabines off the board. And Verbata, and it's uh, the rookie, Lyndon Bay, who's got six goals now and uh, 12 points in the season with a three-point effort this afternoon. Well, you got a hockey game again. It's a one-goal game. The time running down, 3.18 to go. Lyndon Bay was a former L.A. King, came from L.A. for a second-round pick last June. As the Kings, they got so many good young players. Didn't have room for him. And the Canucks grabbed him. For the cap world, that's, uh, that's the way the game goes. Yeah. Same with the uh, Willette going down and you know not being have to be protected and stuff like that. A quick note, Sylvia Camille, 95 years young today of Livonia. Big Red Wing fan and a great uh, Jimmy Howard fan. So happy birthday to Sylvia. He's watching Howard with a great performance here today. You know what, and I mentioned Darren Helm playing for Willie Desjardins. Boy. Howard sits on it. Oh boy, you better get him out of there. And where is it? You better get him out of there. Holy jumping. Wasn't that crazy? It took a pool table bounce off the back. You know those oh, those man. boards that the, the bounce comes off of those boards, they're plywood back. Everyone always asks, why are the boards so lively at the Joe? I spoke to Al Sabotka about it. They're plywood backed. And they're the original boards, the end boards from 1979. The side boards were yeah. changed in 01. That makes them springy when you've got that backing like that. Yeah. But the back boards huh. have never been changed here in this building, and that's why they're they're so lively. We're reviewing this baby. Aren't we? Or we got a penalty? I'm not sure. An awful lot going on right now. So face off to the right of Howard. Do it again. <laughs> Everybody's begging Burroughs. Come on. Burroughs with the uh, on the cheek, the mouse on the left cheek there from the fronds and cut. Took a bunch of stitches. Skate, yeah. I mentioned Lyndon Bay, who has uh, three points. He's another one who played for Willie Desjardins at Medicine Hat, like Darren Helm did. Derek Dorsett. That's part of the reason why the Canucks probably got him in June with Desjardins there as coach and knew him. That well formed today. The Red Wings hold the one goal lead here and a lead pass for Shane. It won't be icing because Riley Shane gets there first. Shane, safe play, trying to put it in behind the Nyquist. Spiza, he's the one who put Applicator out. He's gone for the afternoon with an upper body injury. Bieksa. Gains the Red Wings zone. A backhander that held out by Howard. Came right in front of the net. Guitar couldn't get to it. Point shot from Edmund. Chris Higgins for the Canucks. Threw it into a slew of bodies in front. Nyquist off nice the stanchion stick. and out to center. Could have been a nice stick to Vancouver. Canucks send it back in on side. 2.05 to go. Here's Burroughs centering one. Helm blocked it. Another one. Howard stopped that. They bang away. Higgins a try. Just went wide. Erickson was dumped. Then Higgins in turn went down. Brendan Smith on Higgins. Behind the net to Nick Bonino. Miller reaching out. Ryan Miller heading toward the bench. Now he's gone. Vancouver net empty with 1.45 to go. They already have one empty net goal. Mathias comes back out. Red Wings went to clear across ice. Couldn't ever kept it in. Other side open. And that came quickly in on Howard. Up off the glass. Near boards and the Red Wings frantically just ice it. Face off back in the Detroit zone and we figure a timeout coming Red Wings. Miller on the bench. 126 to play. Howard was good on this last one. 
Canucks all over the place here. That's the one that that's the earlier one. came off the backboards. They wanted reviewed and never got it. And one came in on him before and made a good stop. But they've had lots of opportunities, Vancouver. Now, 32 shots as we get a timeout as we expected. Well, Mike Babcock waited as long as he could to call. Yeah, 32 shots unofficially for Vancouver and 29 for Detroit. Um, I'd have to say that uh, if Detroit prevails here, Jimmy Howard, good chance to be a star in this game. And now we'll give you two stars in this game. Three stars, the three Miller stars. Miller Lite brings you our Miller moment. And it is indeed a Miller moment. All around, a hat trick of Miller. Miller Lite. Drew Miller. And the save by Ryan Miller. Way to go, guys. Everybody's a winner. And mom and dad, <laughs> I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> Just thanks. Good. Everybody came out okay. <laughs> Cal and Peel, we're going to have to go speak to them. No sense of humor. Penalty shot. Really? Come on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but I guess then you'd say it was against. It was no good against uh, Ryan, though, wouldn't you? But it could have been called. We've seen that, whatever you call that stuff up there, level course on the hip. Here we go. Vancouver net empty. The Sedins for Bata and Richardson. Up front for Vancouver, six skaters against five. As the Red Wings' helm was on that draw. With Glendening and Miller. Just kept in, empty net. Boy. Red Wings try to just get it out of the zone. Great work by number two, Smith. Wow. He and Erickson go off as the Red Wings change on the back end to Kaiser and Cronwall come on. Datsuk is out there with Drew Miller and Darren Helm. Henrik Sedin, their captain, shoots it in. Given away. Datsuk Ooh. slides it ahead. Look at this race for the puck. Oh there goes Helm. Datsuk shot and scores. Oh boy. Pavel looks at him and says, why didn't you touch him? <laughs> he was just curling. He in the sure house. Was. He, he was, was sweeping. He was sweeping, all right. Oh, my. That is about as unselfish as it gets. And once again, Pavel Datsuk's on fire. He gets two goals. Nice position by Datsuk defensively. There's your sulky guy. A little flipper, no icing. He's in here. Speedy Creek, go and get that. He didn't have to. Right in the middle of the net. Pavel. <laughs> Fans are singing, they're loving this one. Red Wings up 5-3. They are going to win a season-high fourth consecutive game. The three-gamer high in the lad to that one. Four straight wins for Detroit. They'll be within one point of top spot. Tampa and Montreal in the Atlantic as Howard makes the save. Puck goes off to Miller, then empty again as Ryan's gone back to the bench with 25 seconds left. They're kicking at it, and Drew Miller gets it down the ice into the Vancouver zone. So the Canucks will have their three-game winning streak stopped. These two teams will meet again to kick off 2015 in Vancouver. That's who's unassisted, 19-10. The Red Wings have won four in a row. Give the Canucks credit, boy. They never quit. No wonder they've had such a good first quarter in a bit. Very good hockey team. They come in here on a really good roll. And they play another team that's on a really good roll. Two of the hottest teams in the NHL. The Red Wings prevail. And with five more today, Mick, the Red Wings have scored 15 goals the past three games. They beat Philadelphia 5-2. The Devils 5-4 in a shootout. And 5-3 over Vancouver. And that guy right there raising his stick today, our Fox Sports Detroit Red Wings player of the game presented by McDonald's new fresh baked McCafe blueberry muffin. Way to go, Jimmy Howard. And he ties Harry Lumley for a third on the all-time goaltending win list for the Detroit Red Wings. Way to go, Jimmy.